Now all parts are nice and clean and we can start the assembly. The assembly of the crankshaft, the crankshaft bearings and the casings can be done in different ways. I want to go with putting one bearing in, then put the crankshaft in on one side and then go ahead with the other side. But on the second side we're gonna mount the bearing on the crankshaft and then the case on the crankshaft. Later on, when everything is in, we will put in the, sh the shaft seats because I will heat up the stuff to get the bearings in and I don't want to destroy the shaft seats and I tried already, we can mount them later on. Now we will heat up the case with, the, with fire, cool down the bearing and then hopefully it just falls in. So let's start. Let's hope the best. Yeah, this worked out. It simply fell in. Perfect. Now the bearing gets some heat and the crankshaft follows right in. Not as long because the inner ring is not as much material. So let's try. Maybe this trick works again. Yep. Sits right in. Perfect. The second bearing goes into the other side. I hope as easy. No. And because I don't have a hydraulic press, this is how we're gonna do with the vise. Just use the sockets and push the bearing all the way in. See, we're lucky, it's going easy. On the Aprilia RS I rebuilt recently, it was a much bigger pain. Okay, I think it's all the way in. The next difficult step is to get these two engine cases together and to make it easier I'm going to heat up the inner ring of the right bearing and it should just get together easily. Don't forget this one, otherwise really bad. I hope this goes easy. Not as easy. No. But that's no problem now. We're gonna use the screws. So now I'm gonna put all four in and then. Like pull the cases together with these screws. And don't use too much force on one screw only here. Just go one turn with all of them. Like equally. And don't put too much pressure on anything. A little too much pressure here. It's not what I expected and not really the good way, but that's how you gotta do it. Pieces need to go together and there's different ways to do it, but this one is the best I think. I see it's coming together. Good. This has worked out. 
Now that the cases are together, we can mount these shaft seals. We want to lubricate the bearings with two stroke oil. And we want to mount the shaft or the shaft seal as well with two stroke oil. And then the oil shaft seals can go in. And we mount them with the sealing lip to the inside. That's pretty important. Be gentle on that edge, you don't want to have a scratch inside. And then you can put it in. I'm going to mount the nut on this side so I don't destroy the thread. This one is supposed to sit flush with the surface. Yeah, a little more. Same on the other side. On that nut. Pretty dang good. Next will be the cylinder piston and so on. And that's why I want to cut this gasket at the base for the base gasket. And we just cut it flush. Now we want to prepare the piston with the piston rings and what's important here is that you see this little knobby thing and here we got two sides oh that's not the best and the end of the rings have a face and this should go underneath this knobby thing on the piston so we're gonna mount it like that Maybe you can see it. So now this piston ring, if it's compressed together, it's sitting on spot. That's what we want. And the same for the other ring, but it's on this side. Now it's visible. If it's compressed, the ring is compressed, it will sit in this position and stay in this position. That's important. Now we want to put some oil on that piston bearing and we oil that shaft as well. We come to mounting the piston and on the two strokes and on all bikes usually this arrow points to the exhaust side. So that's what we're going to mount and mount that shaft. Now, what we're gonna do first is we mount one of these um, circlips first. With the piston on the engine, it's always high risk to, to get these um, circlips fall inside to the, to the crankshaft. And not to have that risk, we're gonna want mount one first. This one was tricky, but now it's in. And that's how it looks. And now we want to mount it. That piston, that ring. Push it in from here. Now we can push it all the way in against the other circlip. And mount the second one on this side. But first, we cover this area with the towel. If it drops, it's not too deep. Okay, it's in. Long journey, but finally, 
So what you want to do with these circlips is you want to have them pointing to 6 o'clock because if it's pointing to 3 o'clock from the movement of the piston up and down it could jump out. Next part is the cylinder. The base gasket is on this already and for mounting we oil the piston then we compress these piston rings and just try to put it together. Some oil on the cylinder wall as well. And here you see the compressed piston ring and it's in position now. That's what we want. Yes, finally it's on. Now we turn it around and mount the screws from underneath. Turns easily and feels good. No weird noises, nothing. Good, that's how I like it. I think it's a good idea to mount this one now because we have easy access to it. Just gonna put it on. Don't get these clamps too tight. Just a little hand tight, that's enough. Otherwise, you just destroy the rubber. This one is next. What's really important now is this hose right here. Put it on. Like so. And that's much easier to reach now than later. This tank kind of part has just been cleaned, nothing else. And the engine kind of part is done. So these two can come together now. Here's this rubber air pointing kind of thing. It goes in. Ah, there it is. Here you see, this is for cooling reasons, I think. So that rubber thing is on and what's, what holds it together as well, it's this kind of spring. The next part will be the carburetor. This will be very fiddly and tight, but we'll make it in. I want to mount that hose now, because now I can reach it. Now this one I mounted. And this one is to go, supposed to go all the way around the other one. I'm gonna do that now as well, because later on, no chance. So these three long screws come in. Go all the way through, and go onto the rubber part. more here
like so. Not too tight. It's only rubber against metal against rubber. So don't over tighten these. This looks pretty good. I think we got it. Next gonna be this small wire. It goes in here to the choke and to this kind of switch. Move it forward a little bit. And push it in. Easier said than done. It's just plastic, don't break anything. But now it goes easy. I'm gonna show you how it works. If you move it forward, it's gonna move the choke. And this little switch is what you see here as the choke. Closed, no, open, half closed, fully closed. This decompression valve comes next, followed by this cover. So I clean it a little bit and we we'll reuse it. So it looks good. So no reason to replace it. And at this point I would like to tighten up this nut right here. And to do so we're gonna use this tool. We use this tool, put it in, inside it looks like that, and it will stop the piston. Just as you saw, we're gonna put it in like that. Or we get put the piston down, put this one in, move the piston up. Now it's stuck, and we can tighten that nut. It's that easy. Moving the piston down, we can remove the tool and it's done. And before mounting that cover, this little switch needs to be mounted. Okay guys, that's all for today's video. To see if this thing will ever run again, subscribe and check the next video. Da ist es. Ja. Da.